Even if you don't know much about Zydeco music, you probably know Buckwheat Zydeco. He's played for the closing ceremonies of the Summer Olympics with the Boston Pops and with some of the biggest names in music, including Eric Clapton, Paul Simon, U2, Lyle Lovett, and a long list of others. TV appearances on MTV, The Today Show, network news programs, and with Jimmy Fallon and David Letterman on several occasions have brought him into every music lover's household. President Clinton invited Buckwheat to play at his inauguration, both times. With the top three biggest-selling Zydeco albums of all time, nobody has done more to bring Zydeco to the attention of the world. Along the way, he has gathered a host of awards, including a Grammy and an Emmy. Please enjoy Go Zydeco's interview with Buckwheat. How would you describe the music? I like to, I like to express it by, by saying it, it's party music, family-oriented, roots, culture music. Been in Southwest Louisiana for, you know, my, my dad, granddad, great-granddad, you know, and so many others, you know what I mean? And it, it's a very energetic, happy music, you know, and with the, uh, the instrument that, 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 is, that is being performed with, you know, like the accordion, washboard, something that's, been here before uh, uh, washing machines and all that stuff, you know what I mean? From the age of nine, I got a press organ. I played piano from the early age, at five years old to, uh, to nine years old in elementary school. And then I got a press organ at the age of nine, and I began playing organ in the band. So I, I played the blues, uh, R&B music, funk music, un- until I, I, uh, I had the pleasure of working with the, with the King's article, Clifford Chenier, 1976 to 78. But I had a first band in, uh, from 70, 71 to 75, you know, and I had a big band, which I had 15 musicians on stage, like five, five horn, five singers, and five rhythm. Pretty, pretty heavy funk band, you know, uh, a heavy R&B band. And uh, until 75, I had so many different personalities, man, you know. And so I decided to give myself a break, and then I got an invitation, came to the Club Chenier. I performed with him as an organist, uh, because uh, I am an organist, for over two years, you know, 76 to 78, and then in 1979, I think around October, I decided for the first time to uh, play the accordion. I've never done that before in my life. I've never sang before in my life. Uh, inspired by Kirk Lushini. Because growing up as a kid, Jim, you see, I heard this, this music 24-7. My dad played uh, the roots, deep down roots, only when it was played with just the uh, accordion and washboard. Now, and I heard it every day, morning, noon, night, when he... Come to work, come off of work, he played, he played, and that was enough according for me, you know what I mean? And then working with Clifford Chenier, that really inspired me. I couldn't believe it, because I've never, I've never, ever been to a Zydeco performance, you know, band like that. Because I, I, I was sort of stubborn. Uh, no way, I, I'm not going to play that, which my father wanted me to do that. And uh, so working with Clifford Chenier, I mean, I couldn't believe what I seen, you know. Uh, this cat uh, would get on stage four hours nonstop, no intermission, nothing like that. You know what I mean? I mean, that, I mean, I mean, I mean, and 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 pumping and pumping. Listen to some of his stuff. You know, it, it was amazing. I have never seen a washboard that go around your neck like a bulletproof vest. You know what I mean? Right. And his brother Cleveland Chenier was playing this thing with some some bottle openers, man. In, in all figures, <laughs> and all that was amazing to me. And very energetic, you know. And I knew. I said, well, you know what? Then I, 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 I've been a fool. My dad didn't want me to play this thing. And he and Clifford Chenier were the best of friends, right? He said, you need to play accordion, not like, like me, but like Clifton Chenier. You know, he's Frenchman, you know. Working with Clifton. Now, I really did it for, 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 for my dad. Working with Clifton, uh, and then my good friend, uh, uh, Paul Senegal, Lil Buck, better known as Lil Buck, the guitar, the blues man. He was playing guitar for Clip Chenier. And way back in the 60s, I, I, I played organ for him uh, with Little Buck and the Top Cats. You see what I'm saying? So so, so I, said, I said to myself, I said, if Little Buck is going to play with Clip Chenier, well, ain't nothing wrong with me to do that. So I, I said, I'll go give it a shot. And then, Jim, please believe me. I went on stage at a place called Atlas in Lafayette, my man, on Jefferson Street, I think it is. And I went to that place for the very first time uh, with my ham and organ, double deck, and uh, put it on stage. I said, I'm going to come. I'm going to put my organ on stage. I'm going to play. And then after the gig, okay, I done, I done played, I done played Zydeco music, and I still don't like it. And wind up with, with, with Clifton over two years, man. And I learned what you don't understand, you don't criticize. It, it, it was amazing to me. It, 
was amazing. I've never experienced nothing like that. And I, like, I, uh, uh, like I was about to say, and then I knew. I said, I'm going to play this instrument. So what I did, I bought me a little $500 accordion, piano note, like, like him. And I stayed in almost a year. Almost a year learning this instrument. If I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it right. But I had a problem. I couldn't get no singers to sing. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't sing. If you notice, I, I speak fast. And I was worse then. Uh, I used to stutter up plenty, you know, like, like to, to, to take me two days to say hello. <laughs> so I thought it was best for me to keep my mouth closed and just play the organ and get me a singer with, with, with Buck Rizzotico. Man, none of the good singers I know wanted to, they, they wouldn't touch me with a 10 foot bow. See, man, Buck, uh, see, Buck going crazy. You know, a Buck leaving the organ to play accordion. Because see, they was like me. They want, they want to have nothing to do with the accordion music. So what, what happened there, for me to sing, uh, they really helped me out, you know, to, 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 the, to the little things I'm doing now, you know. Because I've, I've, never, I've never sang a song in my life. The only thing I would sing is, is with my mother, because she, she sang a uh, uh, gospel at the house, you see. And uh, I played the piano for her, you know. But but getting on stage in front of people, man, I I couldn't talk, you know. <laughs> Maybe, does that make sense to what I'm telling you? <laughs> yeah, but so I, I went through them channels, man. I said, thanks to Cliff and Chenier, you know, and my father, because we, 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 uh, 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 let me tell you a little, a little secret. See, my dad, when I, when I had the hitchhikers, uh, the big man, uh, in, uh, for five years, he'd never been, never been even close to, 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 to the door to come in and to listen to me play until I went with Cliff and Chenier, until I built my band, we became, we became best friends. <laughs> man, you know, when I was, when I was younger, you know, uh, he took my he took my my organ away from me for about a year, you know, because I wouldn't play the accordion. He says, uh, "You want to play the accordion? So you're not gonna play anything." And it hadn't been for my mother, man. Uh, you know, she says, uh, "His name's Stanley Senior." She says, uh, "He's not gonna play anything," and that's, that's you know I'm pretty stubborn. And I said, "Well, no, I'm not gonna play anything." And then in school, I played uh, saxophone for about like nine years. So I went from elementary school to high school. But I would always go back to uh, to, the, to to the organ. You see what I'm saying? He decided to give give, give me my organ back, and I was boogie woogie again. <laughs> is there any particular moment that just stands out in your memory as one of your favorites? Doing the inauguration for the president of the United States, man. You know that that's who. You know I mean, you know, how, how how you feel doing? How you feel after you do that? You know what I mean? You have to pinch yourself and, and say, man, we really. Played the inauguration for the president, not one but twice, you know. The Olympics and, and you know, Boston Pop and all, all these great men. The Letterman shows a few times, you know, you know. So that that's a, that is it just a blessing, you know. Let me tell you something. You know, when when I decided to do this in my heart or with my music to make people happy, you see, and and, and that's that, that, that's the bottom line with me. That that that's my main concern to make people happy. You know, it's not just just for a dollar bill. If I had it been for that, I wouldn't be doing it. When I see people happy, little kids, you know, that's come kind of, I did the children's song, you know, because these kids, you have to give fifty percent to the to the children, fifty percent to the to, to, to the to the to the up, to the adults. If I if I can't do it for for everybody, for all generation, I leave it alone. I'm not prepared to do it like that. So I got to make everybody happy. You always gonna have a new generation, long as the standard exists, you know. And the thing is, you've got to have some form to look forward to. You, you, you see, you cannot leave them out, you know, with all the corruption, destruction that's going on on this planet. You teach them early. He says, I have to, I have something for you, too. You know what I mean? And then if these kids, believe it or not, but they appreciate that instead of letting them just go straight. It sure made my day the day you followed me on Twitter. It was, that was awesome. <laughs> cool, man. That's cool, man. I know one of the things that you've got going on is your new YouTube channel, Buckwheat Swirl. Can you tell me about that? Oh, you see, uh, Buckwheat Swirl, it's, it's my every, every day, every day life that I do with the music. Uh, um, not just music, you know, uh, uh, I have kids, I have grandkids, great grandkids, you know, and, and I have chores like everybody else, every individual. I'll slap the hog, I'll, I'll feed the sheep. Feed the chicken, the duck. I mean, this is what I do. You know, <laughs> you know, people say, 
Duck, you do this? Of course I do that. <laughs> What's wrong with me, man? <laughs> so I'm human. I love what I love what I do. I, I love all that. Jump on the tractor, mow the yard, uh, dig the ditch, I, I, whatever. <laughs> I've watched several of the episodes myself, and uh, I subscribed, and uh, I, I really enjoy it. It's it's a great program. Well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, Jim. Yeah, but that that's the, that's me. You, you, you see, when I'm on the road, Buck, it's Buckwheat. When I'm home, it's Stanley. And it, as long as I can, Jim, and this is from the heart, as long as I can, I'm going to do what I'm doing. You, you, you know what I mean? 